young Republican voters there speaking to Barbara Plett Usher. We're going to stay in the States now because a new way to try to tackle the lack of available land to grow vegetables in a city has been dreamed up and of all places New York. A barge constructed out of shipping containers is being constructed to become a floating food forest. It will be part farm and part art project. Well, this seems like a concept that definitely needs more explaining, and to do that is Mary Mattingly, who is one of the organisers of the project, who joins me now from our New York Bureau. Good to have you with us, Mary. Tell us more about this idea. How did you come up with it? Well, the floating food forest was pretty much a collaborative idea. It was um, thought up by me initially, but I worked with a lot of different groups and about 15 organizers to put it together to this phase right now, um, including Youth Ministries for Peace and Justice. How will it work, Mary? So people can come on to Swale and pick fresh, free food, stay, um, hang out, there'll be events, and then they can come back. How many people a day do you think will be able to have access to the fruit and vegetables that hopefully will grow on board? Well, we can have probably about six to, 600 to 1,000 people a day. We assume that about 300 people a day will have a meal. That is a lot of fruit and vegetables. I can imagine a heavy dose of engineering must be involved. I'm wondering how you're going to water all of the plants on board. Oh, that's a really good question. So we're using rainwater that we're purifying, and we're also using the East River and Bronx River water through a purification system based on plants. It's pretty exciting. That does sound exciting. How is this in any way art, Mary? Well, it's both experiential, but it's also a space where, you know, th new things can happen. So what we're really hoping to do is work towards policy change through art, th so through the art lens and pushing the boundaries of what we can do in public spaces and in a commons, we really hope to translate that into something that could actually be a city-wide service. Living in New York, does it feel like people there are not at all connected to their environment? I always feel like we can be connected more to our environments and I think that we've had this system that's really based on supply and waste chain for so long that we're really shifting right now towards a system that's more interdependent and less dependent on the global supply chain. So that's what we're focusing on. Yeah, I wonder about kids as well. Like in many big cities, if you ask a child where their food comes from, they don't know. They think it comes out of a packet. I mean, that's so true. And I think that it's such a special experience to be able to go onto a space and pick a strawberry, or pick some blueberries that you know in the store would be about $6 for a handful. So it's really transformative. And do you think that your idea could grow, that there could be other gardens and spaces in a big city like New York where food could be grown? I th yeah, I do. I think that this is, there have been things like this and there will be more things after this. And the more we can do projects like this, I think the more it'll be accepted and exponentially it can grow. Good luck, Mary. We'll follow you once the project launches. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for joining us.